What's up guys, Travis here. Welcome back to yet another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. So happy to see you guys over here. Well, in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to build the perfect node tree structure that you can use in every single project that you're going to edit in DaVinci Resolve. So without further ado, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve right after the intro. Alright, so welcome back to DaVinci Resolve Studio. The first thing I want to say is to thank MOC Filmmaker for providing us this amazing footage over here. If you guys want to download the footage as well, I will link it down in the description box below. Alright, so the first thing before we start building up our note tree is to know what camera this footage is shot on. So the footage over here is shot on a Canon EOS R5. So now that I know that it's shot on this camera, the first thing that I'm going to do is to convert this footage into Rec 709. So I will guide you step by step on how to do the color space transform by starting on the first note. Over here, let's leave this note blank and add a serial note by hitting the Control S, right? And let's name this as color space transform, CSD to be short. All right, and in this node, we will be doing all the color transform effects um, from this open effects panel over here. So now let's move on to the next node that I'm going to do is to create a primary. So I'm going to add in another serial node over here, all right? And I will name it, I will rename it as primary, all right? So the next node that I'm going to create is called the layer mixer. You can hit alternate L to create a layer mixer. And I'm going to name this as the skin tone. And I'm going to add in another layer mixer. And I'm going to leave this blank. So maybe we can use it um, later on. Maybe fix up some of the blues, of the sky, stuff like that. All right. And this top node over here, I'm going to name it as background. All right. Okay, so the next node after the layer node, I'm going to create a parallel node. By creating that, you have to create the serial node first. And after that, you go to your parallel node. Okay, so in this parallel node, I will just maybe I will do some sky adjustment. All right, after that, in the bottom node, I will name it maybe um, some skin blending. All right, so let's move on to the next node that I'm going to create is the vignette node. All right, let's do a serial node and name this as vignette. Then now I'm going to do an outside node. All right, and call this as outside vignette. And now as you can see, the node tree is a little bit tight right now. So I'll move everything up and I'm going to do another serial node, which I will bring it over down here. I'll rename this node as the glow. Maybe I like to do some glowing effects over here. All right. So the next node I'm going to create is also a serial node. I will rename this as film grain. If you guys want to edit um, film type looks. Okay. So this note over here is actually optional. If you are doing commercial and stuff like that, you probably wouldn't um, want to use this note, but it's okay to leave it over there. If you do not want to use, you can just skip this note. All right, so this is the note tree. This is currently my favorite note tree that uh, I always use in color grading my footages and stuff like that. All right, so now I'm gonna teach you how to save this note tree over here. So each time you start a new project, you do not have to construct this all over again. Um, it's very simple. You can go to gallery over here. Under power grid, it's usually uh, under stills one. Under power grid over here, you can right click on the footage and grab still. All right, so let me demonstrate to you how to use this. Let me just delete every node over here. So again, go to gallery, power grid, right click, and you can select the apply grid over here. As you can see over here, all the nodes that we created just now are being created in this footage over here. All right, so now that you know how to save your note tree, now let me just guide you through what are all these notes for, just to let you guys know how to use all of these notes over here that we have just created. 
all right so the first node as we said we leave it blank because maybe sometimes we will use it um, in this case maybe i will do some noise reduction over here i'll rename this node over here as nr all right all right so i'm not going to touch the noise reduction node over here first i'm going straight on to the csd um, in the csd node is where you can color space transform your footage so in this so like i said before this footage is shot on the canon eos r so i'm going to go to here open effects and we will search for color space transform right over here let's drag it into our notes and in the input color space i will use canon cinema gamut right and under the input gamma i will use the canon lock okay so now as you can see the color space have been transformed all right so under the primary node over here we're going to add some contrast let me just switch this very quickly the parade okay I will just add in some contrast just to stretch out the waveform over here let us see okay now I'm gonna do some white balance as you can see the blues are dominating in this footage all right so now let's use the white balance tool over here click it and select the white areas all right now it's a little bit too yellow so I'll definitely increase the magenta tint a little bit just to balance up things a little bit not too much you know all right so what we could do right now is to stretch out the blacks a little bit because it's not really touching the zero point over here the blacks point so let's go to shadows and let's just decrease the shadow just by a little bit maybe i will drop down the overall exposure a little bit by going to the first dot over here under primaries and i'll drop down the offset just a little bit will do just to bring back all the details now the blacks is touching so let's go back to shadows and pull it back a little bit all right so now this footage is looking good over here this is the before and this is after this is the before it's very very blue as you can see there's not much contrast on the hair on the blacks and stuff like that so this is the after okay so now let's head to the layer mixer node where we will isolate some colors i don't see there's much colors in this footage except for blue and orange so i will just delete this node over here okay and i'll rename this to skin tone okay so under this node i will just go to my qualifier and select the skin tone color as simple as that and let us see where we have selected by hitting the shift h on your keyboard okay pretty much accurate just a little bit more let me just refine it a little bit all right so now we have our skin tone selected now let's see where our skin tone color lies we can go to the vector scope if you guys didn't see the skin tone indicator line over here you can go to the settings icon over here and just check the show skin tone indicator all right just check it and you're good to go so now our skin tone is lying around the yellowish color a little bit so let's just do some fine tunings and uh, some color grading to make the skin tone look natural all right i'm going to go to my curves under hue versus hue all right the second dot over here we are going to select yellow Okay, and now we are going to shift the hue of the yellow all right so now it's looking pretty good just a little bit too much of saturation but it's okay all right so now let's unhide the mask by hitting shift h on your keyboard all right so now you can see the skin tone is now properly corrected however it's a little bit too much of saturation so i will drop down the saturation by just a little bit just to make it even more natural okay so now let's boost up the color of the sky a little bit by going to the background node over here let's just increase the color boost by a little bit maybe around 20 will do okay that's fine for me it's looking good all right so now let's see the before and after this is the before and this is the after so let me just quickly close this gallery so you guys can see a bigger image and as well as the clips all right so this is the before and this is the after 
And now let's see our skin tones before and after. Now this is the before and this is the after. As you can see, the skin tone is now so much more um, natural over here. Alright, I hope you guys can see. Alright, so once you have done doing all the primary adjustment over here, correcting all the skin tones, stuff like that, let's create the look. As you can see, the footage over here, that's not much colors, there's only blues and um, orange. So let's do some famous orange and teal look into this footage. So under the sky adjustment, I will just key in the blue color over here. I will just do some qualifier to the sky color. Alright, let's see what we have selected. You can add the color range by clicking this um, icon over here and select the area that you want to select. Okay, maybe including some clouds as well, just not the subject. Okay, let's do some blur radius just to smooth out the edge. Alright, you can hit the shift H to unhide the mask. And now let's create the teal color on the sky. So again, under the sky adjustment, I'm going to add some teal color into the sky. Alright, now as you can see, the teal started to appear on the sky. And now let's do some skin blending. Because it's a little bit too uh, magenta-ish orange, so I will shift the tint into the greener side. As you can see, the overall image now started to look the orange and teal look. Okay, so now let's see what's the before and after. This is the before and this is the after. Alright, so now under the vignette node, I'm just going to do some vignette. It's very simple. Let's click the windows icon over here and let's do a circle window and expand it out a little bit. I'm going to increase the feather by a lot. Okay, alright, and then we're going to select the inverse mask and let's go to our curves, the first dot, and let's bring down the curves a little bit. Okay, so now we have our vignette on. Let's pop the subject on by using the outside vignette node. Let's go to the curves and under these three dots over here, let's um, enable the editable spines and select the first dot over here and increase the exposure okay and let's hit the bottom dot over here and let's decrease the shadows all right just a little bit will do okay so now we have done the vignetting this is the before and this is the after so you can really really focus on the subject okay so now i'm going to create some glow just to pop up the skin tones a little bit more so i'm going to open up the fx panel and let's type in glow okay drag and drop into our glow node all right so the first thing i'm going to change is the composite type let's change it to soft light and now let's decrease the shine threshold so the darker area will also have this effect so let me just decrease the shine threshold by a little bit and increase the spread a little bit as you can see we're adding tons of contrast with the subject over here now let's just blend it in a little bit by um, decreasing the blend. I guess 331 will be good. Okay, let's see the before and after. Definitely help the skin tone to shine a little bit. Okay, so the final note that I'm going to do is to add in some film grain. Uh, you can skip this note if you want to. So I'm just going to open the effects panel over here and type in film grain. And maybe I'll add in, let's just assume that this is a 35 millimeter lens. Let's add in 35 millimeters and you will definitely see some grain over here just to make it look more like a film type. All right, so just let me find a spot where you can see film grain, maybe on the skin tone. Okay, let's see the before. Definitely you can just see a minor effect on the skin tone and this is the after. All right, so just a final bonus tip for you guys. If you guys want to add in those cinematic bars, it's very easy in DaVinci Resolve. Let's go back to edit over here. Hit the edit and let's go to timeline and select the output blanking 
and let's select 2.39 as you can see it in this cinematic bar for you so now let's see the general before and after this is the before and this is the after so that's how I built up my note tree in DaVinci Resolve. If you guys do not understand what types of the notes I use in this video, I have made another video for you guys talking about the four main types of notes that you guys should really, really understand before jumping into any color grading process. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you have any question, leave it down in the comment section down below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.